Hey everyone, Effie here. Today I'm going to show you how I watercolored this card using our Loose Poinsettia stamp set. So I'm going to start off by placing this digital cut file, which is our placement guide. It comes in the same cut file as the digital die cuts. So I place it into my original size Misty, placed both Poinsettia cuts inside the negative space. Then I place my stamps onto my Misty and now let's get ready to emboss. After I inked up my stamps with some clear embossing ink, I stamped the two pieces and then poured on some Brutus Monroe alabaster embossing powder. Next, I'm going to heat the floral with my heat gun. Next, I'm gonna move on to emboss some foliage and berries and I'm just going to white heat emboss a bunch of these. I already pre-cut these on watercolor paper, so all I need to do is place it into that placement guide and just emboss them. This is why I really love cutting these beforehand because you have all of these small pieces already cut and they were all cut using my electric cutting machine like my Cricut. If you have a scanning cut, you can use that as well. But die cutting these small leaves and foliage pieces, I never really liked die cutting these individually because it took so long. The process just was so tedious. So I really enjoy using the digital file to cut these smaller pieces. Next, I'm going to be doing some watercoloring using Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pens. And this is their special holiday set. I'm going to start off by watercoloring with the Rudolph's Nose Pen or Marker. I just started adding some of this ink or pigment into the inner portions of my poinsettia petals. Then I took a fine tip water brush and I blended that pigment out to the outer edges of the petal and I slowly created a nice gradient from dark to light as we went from the inner petal to the outer petal. And I'm just going to repeat this process until I color in the entire poinsettia. You see my hand moving back and forth from the top right hand portion of my craft desk to that paper towel that you see in the bottom portion of this video. And the reason behind this is to control the amount of moisture that's on my brush tip. And this is going to aid in getting that really dark concentrated amount of pigment in the inner portions of the petals to getting that really light pigment or wash at the end of my poinsettia petals. If you want to learn how to watercolor from me, I will be holding a two-day craft retreat in Times Square, New York City next year on March 6th and March 7th. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be teaching two four-hour watercoloring classes. One class, I'll be using the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pens. The classes will be great for beginners to expert level painters if you just want to brush up or learn some new techniques. It's going to be a really great crafty time. You'll learn some really great new skills. You'll meet other great crafty people and you'll have the chance to win some prizes. There's going to be some shopping available and you'll be provided with the main products that you need in class. For the retreat, I'll link all the details for this great event in the description box below, so be sure to head over there to check it out. All right, let's move on to our project. This poinsettia is all colored in. I colored in the other two off camera. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint the other elements that I've already uh, cut out. So I'm just going to use the same Rudolph's nose to color in the berries. I went ahead and put down a little bit of pigment in each individual berry. And then after I've done that, I've just blended that pigment out to color in the entire cluster. Then I'll just use the same spruce pen to color in my holly leaves. I also use the pine cone sparkle pen in the same set to color in the branch of the holly leaf cluster. So next I'm just going to color in the rest of the elements. I don't want to show you everything um, on camera because I don't want to bore you with the details, but here's everything colored and I'm just so happy with the results. You have that really beautiful subtle shimmer. And next up, I'm going to white heat emboss our Christmas sweater background stamp 
onto some mint cardstock, which was cut down to about five by six inches. And I'll use my Baron tool to help get a nice crisp impression on that mint piece of cardstock. Once my cardstock was stamped, I just spooned on some of the same alabaster embossing powder, and then I'll just heat emboss the whole panel. And you have this really beautiful, crisp, festive image this is one of my favorite background stamps for the holidays because you can do so much with it. You can emboss it in white to get a nice subtle background or you can stamp it in any color for a more bolder look. Either way, you're going to get a really nice result because the design is just so clean and really fun. So now I'm just going to play around with the positioning of my poinsettias and then I finally decided to go with this final layout. Once I was happy with this, I just started popping everything up using some dimensional foam tape. I got the bigger elements down onto my embossed panel first, and then I started adding in the berries and leaves. And I made sure to add a nice balance on the left and right sides of my poinsettia half wreath. So you can see I just start tucking in some of the berries and then the holly leaves. I should have waited to put the extras on the bottom portion of my wreath because I went back and I put something else under here for the sentiment. I took our 6x8 modern label stamp set. I took this stamp from that set and I silver heat embossed it onto some white cardstock and then I stamped my sentiment right onto this label. More towards the bottom edge because the top edge of this label is going to be tucked into my floral cluster. So I just stamped this Christmas sentiment using our Everglade Moss dye ink and then after that was stamped, I tucked the label into my cluster and then I replaced the holly leaves and berries. Lastly, I just added some silver holographic sequins to finish off my card. And this adds a really nice touch of bling with that unexpected holographic accent. I'm really happy with the results of this card. I just thought that mint green panel looked really beautiful against the bright, beautifully watercolored poinsettias. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's project and video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because I update it weekly.